All right. Well, morning, Harbor Fam. So good to be with you this morning. We're going to begin uh, service uh, with a call to worship from Psalm 33, starting with verse 6. So let's hear the word of the Lord. He says, The heavens were made by the word of the Lord, and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the water of the sea into a heap. He puts the depths into storehouses. Let the whole earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came into being. He commanded it and it came into existence. Let's pray together. Father, we are reminded that you are the God who spoke. And you created the heavens and the earth. Through your Son. And Lord, as we think about your great power and your great mercy, Lord, we want to stand in awe of who you are and what you have done on behalf of humanity. Lord, we pray this morning that, that we would find Jesus as our refuge and our strength. We pray you would use this time to uh, strengthen us, that we may glorify you in all that we do. And so we respond to your greatness and your goodness through songs of praise. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite you to stand as we worship our great God and King. search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures that fade Are never enough Till you came along You put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. And I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me free. Amen. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place. Your mercy and grace won't find me again. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn gray 
believes in You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn mourning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you Last time Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you
join me in prayer. Father, as we have sung, we now proclaim and remember that our God never changes. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is our God. This is the God that we seek this morning. We praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence and to behold you, as John would say. Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. God, we want to see that in this place this morning. We pray that your spirit and your presence would overwhelm us as we seek you this morning, God. And we confess, we confess that maybe some of us have come into this place just kind of haphazardly. Maybe we've come into this place, we walked into this place, and we're not even ready to seek you. We pray that you would bid us come. That you would show yourselves to us. Father, we pray that this time would change our hearts and our minds. We would be intimate with you, God. Maybe some of us have come into this place beat up. We have been beaten down from this world this past week, and we need encouragement. We need hope. We need to gaze upon our King. We pray that you would allow us to behold you. God, and we think about the churches around this island, churches that are meeting this morning, that are proclaiming the gospel, God, we pray that you would meet those churches, you would meet the people who walk into those places, you would fill them, you would cause them to see you. We pray that the gospel would be proclaimed and people would be saved. And God, even as we think about that, we think about Maui, and we ask that your presence would be very, very evident in this time of heartache and pain and destruction sure people are questioning why why did this happen god and we don't know we just know that you're sovereign we know that you work all things together for good for those who love you god we know that you use the bad the difficult the ugly in our lives to see you so we pray god that you would you would bring healing you would bring mercy you would bring help we pray that you would be exalted in that place god please be with those who are hurting give churches give organizations give even this Hawaiian islands, these Hawaiian islands, just a heart that, that will care and reach out to them. So please do that. Even as they're still mourning and, and, and thinking and, and working through things, God, we ask that you would do that. And as we meet in the name of Christ, God, we pray that you would, you would allow us to hear your word. We pray for Pastor John, and he, he, he brings your word this morning. Pray that you would fill him with power, with love, with authority. God, we long to see you. We pray that you would open our eyes to behold wonderful things in your law. Even as we commune commune together, we pray that you would be exalted. So thank you for this time, and we pray these things in the matchless, mighty, holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Pastor Mike. Well, before you take a seat, let's go ahead and uh, turn to someone and welcome them. Say, how's it? ever be a baby. That sounds pretty good. Oh yeah, oh great.
All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us this morning at Harbor Newton Wanu. We're going to continue service. If you got kids from three years of age to fifth grade, we're including elementary, we got a class for you outside. So if you got kids from three years old to fifth grade, elementary, preschool, elementary school age, you can go out the door to my right and they're, they're gathering together and they'll be having uh, their class. So stoked for that. All right. Well, um, let me share a quick couple opportunities. So as we've been praying uh, for, for Maui, uh, for Lahaina, uh, right, we want to tangibly bless them. And so uh, one of the ways that we want to support them is through looking into long-term support for the people of Lahaina. And so um, we're partnering with churches in Maui as well as the EFCA. EFCA is our network of churches, and, and the EFCA has a crisis response team. And so you know that the fires in California in 2018, the EFCA response team, crisis response team, is still there five years later, helping with the spiritual and physical and emotional needs for the people who are impacted by those fires in California. So we're looking into um, long-term support. There's a lot of great short-term support, which is happening, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but a, a lot of times, right, after 12 months, after a crisis, a lot of times that support ends. And so we, we really want there to be a long-term support. So we're working with churches in Maui as well as the EFCA. And so if you want to give towards that, uh, just go to our website, harbornewtonwano.org go to giving, click our campus, Harbor New Wanu, and then there's a category for Maui uh, relief as we continue to pray for them, but as well as support them, uh, support them tangibly. Uh, second opportunity I wanted to let you know about is, is just to remind us about our, our upcoming gatherings here. So we're meeting next week Sunday right here at Ma'e Ma'e, August 20th. So we're doing back-to-back, -back, so um, two weeks in a row. So uh, don't forget, we're here next week, Sunday. And then next, next month in September, we're meeting for two Sundays again. It'll be the second and fourth. And then, Lord willing, August 10th, 10th, the second week of October, will be our official relaunch date where we're meeting here uh, every single uh, Sunday. So our next gathering here is, yeah, amen, August 20th. So next week, Sunday, we'll be here. We'll, we'll, we'll get a feel of meeting back-to-back -back as we ramp up replanting here uh, in, in New Uwanu. All right, well, uh, let's open up our Bibles to Acts 2.42. 2 uh, we're doing a short two-week series here at Harbor New Uwanu, um, going through some of the spiritual disciplines. Now, uh, here's, here's the reason why. is A few months ago, our ministry leaders, we got together to pray for our church replant. And one of the convictions that our ministry leaders have is, is that as we replant, as we shoot to replant in the fall, um, that we'd be growing spiritually as followers of Jesus, right? We want our church to grow uh, as we see people coming to know Jesus, but we also want to see people growing, coming to know, um, coming to be more and more like Jesus. We want to see growth in character and a love for God. And so one of the ways we want to encourage that is by taking a couple weeks to focus on some of the gifts that God has given us to fuel our love for him, to stoke our love for him. Just like gas gives, gives uh, uh, right, life to the car to keep running, right? The spiritual disciplines are a gift to fuel our love for God. These are spiritual dis disciplines are practices like prayer or the intake of God's word, serving, evangelism. And there's some, some not so well-known ones like fasting or solitude. Um, but these, these disciplines are meant to, to bless us for us to practice they don't automatically make us more like jesus but they're tools that the lord uses to grow us to be more like him i think one of the uh common misconceptions when it comes to spiritual disciplines is to keep them separate from the gospel i think it's really common for christians to think okay i received the gospel i've trusted in jesus now now i need to move on to deeper things like the spiritual disciplines it's kind of like if, if, if the gospel is getting you into school, the spiritual disciplines are working up the grade level. But that's the wrong view. Right? Spiritual disciplines isn't divorced or disconnected from the gospel. 
Right? The spiritual disciplines take us deeper into the gospel. It's like scuba deer, a, sc- a scuba gear that allows us to dive deep into the ocean to explore the treasures of Christ. That's the spiritual disciplines. So maybe this morning you're, you've been enjoying Jesus, right? And, and you want to grow more in that enjoyment and worship of Jesus. Well, the spiritual disciplines help. Or maybe this morning you come in just beat up, not really, you know, desiring God the way that you want, kind of more going through the motions of following Jesus, but that, that heart is lacking. Well, the spiritual disciplines are a gift for you, right, to fuel that passion for the Lord. So let's pray. Let's pray that the Lord would, would, would use his word for that. Father, we pray that as we dig into some of the spiritual disciplines this morning, Lord, use these gifts that you've given us to fuel our love for Jesus and our love for others. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Acts 2 42 gives us a glimpse of the first church, right? This is the church where members in it were around when Jesus was around. They walked with Jesus. They some of these individuals heard Jesus' voice. They saw Jesus perform miracles. They hung out with Jesus in homes and at the temple. And Luke, who's the author of Acts, records what the church was committed to, the disciplines that they practiced as followers of Jesus. Verse 42, it says, They've devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And here are some of the things that the church practiced. They were committed to the apostles' teaching. It's God's word for us. Or that's the teachings of the Bible for us. They were devoted to fellowship, which here it's the breaking of bread and prayer. Right? That means that they were committed to gathering together as followers of Jesus. They took communion together. They ate food and enjoyed each other's company together, and they spent time praying together. They hung out in each other's homes. It wasn't just in a church gathering, but in each other's homes, they gathered and spent time enjoying each other and encouraging one another. So today, we're going to just think about two spiritual disciplines, the intake of God's word and prayer. We're going to focus on those two, and then next week, Pastor Mike's going to cover a couple more Spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines can be practiced on your own. They can also be practiced in community with other followers of Jesus. And Psalm 1, I think, gives us a beautiful vision of a person devoted to God's word. The intake of God's word. Psalm 1 reads, How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He's like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bear its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. So we're going to think about the spiritual discipline of intaking God's word. As we look at Psalm 1, right, here's this picture of human flourishing, right? This individual is blessed, right? Another word for that is happy. They're full of joy with God in their life. But not only that, they're experiencing fruitfulness. They're bearing fruit in its season. Right? This individual is living life as God intended them to live, prospering, being fruitful. They're avoiding evil. They're delighting in God. Now, maybe we read this and we're like, okay, like, that does not describe me. Maybe like, like one day of the week or every so often, but this I wish this described me. I pray this describes me. Right? And in a sense, that's true for all of us, right? This is ultimately a picture of Jesus who always delighted in the Father, who always delighted in obeying the Father, who always avoided evil. Right? Someone ultimately describes Jesus. But it's also a picture of what God wants us to grow in. Right? People to be like Jesus. So let's zero in on verse 2, right? It says, his delight is in the law of the Lord. He he delights in God's word. That's the Lord's instruction, right? For the Old Testament believer, that would be the law. For us, it's it's the Bible, the entire Bible. Now, here's what's interesting about this this individual, 
right, is, is what they're delighting in. They're not delighting in their fruit. Right, if you think, uh, you know, someone who's successful, their, their joy and delight often is in their success. Whether it's in the money they've made, maybe it's in their status, maybe it's the influence they have, right? Their delight often is in the fruit. But this individual doesn't delight in the fruit. They delight in God's law. In other words, they delight in the Lord. It wasn't about their circumstances. See, because God's word leads us to God. Jesus said in John chapter 5 that the scriptures point to him. But the religious leaders didn't see that, and they refused to come to Jesus to have life. God's word is meant to point us to Christ, the one who delights in God's word, right? ultimately delights in the Lord. So when we think about the spiritual discipline of right, the intaking of God's word, it has to start with why. Why do we read our Bibles? Why do we study our Bibles? Right? There's a lot of good reasons why uh, we study the Scriptures. Right? One reason, right, we study the Bible for wisdom in navigating life. Right? The Bible speaks about our work, gives us wisdom about our relationships. It gives us wisdom about our interpersonal struggles and how to navigate through these things. Right? God's Word is filled with a lot of wisdom on how to navigate life in this world. We can also read the Bible to understand God's plan for the world. His big plan for human history is God reveals in the scriptures. The Bible gives a vision of the future and the return of Christ and Jesus putting everything back in its place. And that's a good reason to study the word. But I believe the ultimate reason we intake God's word, why we read our Bibles, the why, it's to worship the Lord. It's to worship God. It's to enjoy Jesus. I mean, think about what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. He says, everything, right, he considers everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus. Right, so Paul is saying, right, the ultimate thing, he considers everything else a loss, everything in this life, compared to knowing Jesus, enjoying Jesus, worshiping Jesus. That was Paul's ultimate aim to know the lord jesus christ so i want to encourage us right when we read our bible start with the why because we want to grow in worshiping and enjoying jesus make our time the next time we listen to god's word on a podcast on the radio uh, next time we read god's word the ultimate goal is worship is worship See, when uh, we want to be informed about what's going on in the world, we read the news, right, a news article. When we want to know how to fix something, right, we'll pull out an instruction manual and read how we can fix that thing. But if we want to grow in a deeper love with someone, we want to read the letters, the notes that they have given to us. For us nowadays, it's text messages and, and emails, right? Those are the things that, 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 that reveal a person's heart towards us. I still keep to this day a little box, and in it I have letters that Trisha wrote to me while we were married, I think when we were dating, and even before we started dating, uh, when she would write encouragement notes to me. And so I still have them in a little box, and random times I'll pull them out and, and I'll read them. I don't read it like a news article to get info. I don't read it like an instruction manual to get instruction. I read it as love letters and notes. Because I love her and she loves me. Right? God's word right, is like a love letter to us. It's his love letter revealing to us who he is and what he has done for us. What he thinks about us and how we can respond to his love. And so because of that, we should read God's word thoughtfully dwelling on it, thinking deeply about these love letters that God has given to us. In, in Psalm 1 verse 2, right, the psalmist describes this practice as meditation. Right? He meditates on it day and night. He's always thinking about it. Right? You don't really do that too often with the news. You don't do that too often with an instruction manual, but to a love letter, right, you're thinking about it a lot. 
right? We do that with things that we delight in. We think about it a lot, things that we enjoy, right? You know, like when you know you're going to a favorite restaurant or you're trying on a new restaurant, right? And, and, and you're excited to try a certain dish. You've been yelping it and everything and all work day long, right? To get you through work, you're thinking about, man, I, I wonder what that dish is going to taste like. Or if you know what you're going to eat, oh, I can't wait to eat that dish at that restaurant, right? You're, you're thinking about it a lot at the workplace. Why? Because you delight in it. You, you, you're looking forward to enjoying it. So when we enjoy something, we tend to think about it a lot. That's meditation. Now, we shouldn't get meditation confused with Eastern meditation or even modern meditation techniques because a lot of those kind of techniques is about emptying your mind. Right? It's as if your mind is like a water bottle that's filled with dirty water. Right? So certain forms of Eastern meditation and modern meditation would say, okay, your mind just dump it all out. Empty your mind of all these things. But that's not the picture of biblical meditation. Biblical, uh, biblical meditation is not emptying your mind. It's filling your mind with God's word. So instead of dumping out that dirty water, right, you, you fill that dirty water with fresh water so that eventually all that dirty water is exposed out and all you have left is that fresh water. Biblical meditation isn't about emptying your mind. It's about filling your mind with the truths of God's word, thinking deeply about something. But again, we, we, we meditate on a lot of things. It's whatever we think deeply about. Right, using the, if I can go back to like a, a, a friend or um, a, a marriage example, right? When, when you think about someone that you really care for, right? And they send you a letter, an email, or a text message, right? You'll spend time kind of reading into it. Right, because you really want to understand what they're saying. I remember even in, in high school from years ago, right, someone would write something and then they'll put XOXO and you're like, wait, what does that mean? What does XOXO mean? And you think a lot about it, right? Uh, love letters I know I, I had from Trisha. I would read it and be like, okay, what is she trying to say? Right? And, and you're just trying to figure out and understand it. Right? You're thinking deeply about it because of your love or your interest in that individual. Right, so meditation is thinking deeply about something. We grow in, in meditating on God's word as we grow in delighting in him. Now again, maybe for some of us, we might be struggling in your time reading the Bible because we're struggling in our time with delighting in Jesus. Right? We're lacking motivation. What do we do? What do we do when we're lacking motivation to read the Bible, to meditate on the Bible? What do we do when our, our relationship with Jesus seems seems dry, right? You're not alone. Every Christian I talk to goes through that. What do you do then? Well, first I want to encourage you, confess that to God, right? He knows. He knows when we're just not feeling it. And so confess that, God, you know, my heart is cold. I got sin in my life. I need your help, right? Jesus died for us. He wants us to go to him in our struggles. So, so confess that to God. God, I'm struggling with enjoying you and enjoying your word. And then Meditate on the scriptures. Meditate on the scriptures, even if you don't feel that desire, right? Confess that. Now, some of us might think, well, that's hypocritical, right? If I don't feel like reading the Bible and I make, I make myself read the Bible, that's hypocrisy. No, that's actually not. Hypocrisy is saying, oh, everything's good when it's really not. That's hypocrisy. But it's, it's genuine when we come to God and say, God, I'm really not feeling reading your word but I'm, I'm going to trust you. And you said this is a good thing. So even though I don't feel it, I'm going I'm to get into your scriptures because it's good for me. Use it to draw me to yourself. Confess to God and then get into the scriptures and meditate. Fill your mind with God's word. Think about it deeply. I want to encourage you with the words of the Puritan Thomas Watson. He said it like this. The reason we, we come away so cold from reading the word is because we do not warm ourselves at the fires of meditation, right? That's just how it, right? When we, when we start thinking about something a lot, it begins to consume us, right? Anything. It could be things we're anxious about, things that we love. Make it God's word that's just swirling around in our minds. Confess our struggle to God and then get into Bible reading and then, and then enlist other people to support you 
in your life, to read the word with you. That's why we have community groups and journey groups. Those are meant to come together in our times, even when we're struggling for other followers of Jesus to encourage us and to study the word of God and meditate on it and apply it together. So I want to encourage us right, to warm ourselves at the fires of meditation. Now, what do you think about then when, when you're uh, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, meditating, thinking about the scriptures? You can think about who God is, what he has done. You can think about who we are and how we're to respond. But we also wanted to equip you. Uh, we, we're giving away to every person a book uh, from Don Whitney called Spiritual Disciplines. It's a book I had to read for uh, my seminary class, and uh, it, it teaches on the spiritual disciplines. And in chapter 3, he, he walks through different things you can think about when you're reading the scripture, so different ways to meditate. And so we've got that book free for you. So, so uh, chapter 3 is on meditation. So don't forget to, uh, to, to, to grab one. No charge. It's our gift from us to you. Um, so that's, that's uh, Don Whitney's uh, spiritual disciplines, right? Warm ourselves at the fires of meditation. The second spiritual discipline that I wanted to touch upon today is, is prayer. So the, the apostles devote themselves to. Now, when we think about prayer, right, we might think about um, that it begins with us. Right? Okay, prayer is, is me talking to God. But when you think about it, prayer really begins with God speaking to us. Right? So think about it like this, right? God has spoken first to us by his word. Right? He's given us his word. That's his spoken word to us. And then in response to God speaking to us through his word, we then pray to him. So prayer really is a response to God by him first speaking to us. Now, I just want us to pause just to think about the reality of prayer, right? That the God of the universe, who created the heavens and the earth, everything that we see, the God who holds this world together by the power of his word that keeps it from falling apart, the God who knows all things and can do anything that he pleases, right? This powerful, powerful and awesome God has chosen to speak personally to us and has chosen to listen to his children. He hears every word that we speak. Right? It makes me think about, uh, you know, like famous celebrities or athletes that we read about or that we see videos on, on social media where they want to avoid the public. They want to avoid their fans because they just don't have time for them or they're not interested in them. Right? They, they don't want to meet everybody. Right, they'll reject autographs or sign them really quickly, right, but not really want to invest in their fans. But that's not the Lord. Right? The Lord listens to us. The Lord stops to hear our prayers. Right? He has more thoughts towards us than all the sands on the seashore, as David wrote. Jesus wants us to pray. The Lord wants us to pray to him. Right, think about this, right? Jesus died on the cross to reconcile us to the Father so that we could have rich and deep fellowship with God. So if there's any part of you that thinks, oh, God doesn't really want me to pray. He's tired of my voice. He already knows I'm going to say no. He wants to hear your voice. Right? Throw any of those thoughts out that, that tell you he doesn't want you to come to him. He wants you to come to him. He gave his one and only son so that we could come to him. So with that in mind, I want us to think about three habits of prayer that we can grow in. The first is growing in private prayer. Growing in private prayer. Jesus said, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard by their many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask them. 
right? Private prayer is just you and the Father. It's that special time, right, where you open your heart to God and, and, and only He hears your voice. It's that one-on-one time. There's no one else to impress, right? It's just you and the Father. So in, in, in my family, with, with our kids, Trisha and I will, will often take each of our kids out on, on hangout date times, just one child. And that's so that we can have that one-on-one time where, where we can just open our hearts to each other. Because oftentimes in a family, it, it can oftentimes be difficult to have that one-to-one time. And so we want to make time to, to just spend with each of our, our, our kids where we can just open our hearts to one another. How much more the Father, God our Father, right, who wants us to have this intimate one-on-one time where we can just spend enjoying his presence. If you have a difficult time establishing that, I would encourage you to set a, a time and a place for that to happen. A certain time in the day and a certain place. And that often can help get the ball rolling in that special time of private prayer. The second habit to grow in is prayer on the go. Prayer on the go. Right, so most of our day, we're not in a private room talking to the Father. Wait, we're out about doing life. We're going to work. We're taking care of our family. We're out on mission for Jesus. We're hanging out with our friends. Right? Prayer on the go is this continual prayer with God as we do life. Right? We see examples of this in the Bible. We see Nehemiah, when he was cruising with his boss, said a prayer to God when he was talking with his boss. Jesus himself, when he was hanging out with his disciples, would, would pray to the Father. Right, Paul says that we're to pray continually, to be aware that God is with you and, and we can pray to him whenever we want because we need the Spirit's power, don't we, in all of life, in our families. We need the Spirit's power at work. We need the Spirit's power in our temptations and struggles. And he's always there with us, available, wanting us to go to him in dependency. Prayer on the goal can look like praying as you're driving the work, praying as you stand in the grocery line for the salvation of that person, ringing up your groceries, praying as you walk the dog for the neighborhood to come to know Jesus, praying while you're doing the dishes for your family members. Right? Prayer on the go right? is, is praying as you do life. The third habit to grow in is private, uh, sorry, it's corporate prayer, prayer with others. Prayer with others. The church was committed in Acts 2.42 to praying with one another. Jesus said, when two or more are gathered together in his name, he is with them in a special way. He says, I'm there with them in, in their midst. So there's a way that Jesus' presence is with us in a way that, in a sense, he's not when we're alone. Right? He shows up in a special way. That's why the gathering together of God's people is so vital. Right, because Jesus is with us in a, in, a, in a special way as we come together in his name and as we pray. Praying with others, I find for myself, is so encouraging. There are times in my life that I'm discouraged or maybe dry, going through seasons of dryness in my time with the Lord. And when I pray with other believers, I get so encouraged and filled with strength and joy and a renewed passion with God when I spend time praying for others and when they're praying for me. But praying with others, I realize I often learn more about the person that I'm praying with, right? It's kind of a neat thing, right? It's like, it's like siblings going to their father, right? It's an opportunity to learn more about your sibling as you're both praying to the father. Picture Prayer with others like that. It's like brothers and sisters running up into their father's lap to enjoy them, to, to enjoy him together, to go to him in, in times of need. So praying in private, praying on the go, praying with others. But what do you pray? What are some things you pray? Well, uh, I want to encourage us four ways. Uh, there are a lot of strategies that, that you can do this. Here's just one way. I taught a couple of my kids. Uh, it's using the acronym PRAY, P-R-A-Y. I don't just work with that. And oftentimes, they're like, hey, what do I pray? I'm going to pray to God. What, what should I pray? Well, here's one way. I want to encourage us. There's a lot of ways again. Uh, PRAY, acronym PRAY. First is P. P in PRAY stands for praise. 
right? When we're praying to our Lord, spend time adoring him, thanking him, praising him for what he has done, for who he is, adoring our Lord Jesus Christ, reflecting on the great things that God has done in the scriptures, reflecting on the great things God has done in our personal lives, and just spend time praying, uh, praising him. That's the P. The R in, in, in prayer is to reveal. To reveal. This is a time of confessing our sins and confessing our struggles to God. He already knows them already, but he wants us to come to him open-hearted. Not to hide our struggles and sins from our father. Right? Any good parent would be devastated if their son or daughter hid their struggles from them. Right? Any good parent and loving parent would want their kid to open up to them if they're going through any difficulties in school or, or in relationships. Right? How much more our Heavenly Father, who's perfect, who wants his kids to come to him in times of temptation and struggle and, and, and sin. Right? Adam and Eve did the opposite. When they sinned against God, they hid from God and they tried to cover themselves with leaves. But God, he called them, he called Adam to come and reveal themselves to him because God desires redemption. He desires closeness. And so spend time confessing to God our sin, confessing to him our struggles and asking him for strength, repenting and turning from that sin and trusting in Jesus to help us in those struggles. So spend time our revealing, confessing our sin. The A is ask. The A in prayer is to ask of the Lord. And we probably do this the most as Christians, right? And God wants us to come to him, right? He's our Heavenly Father. He wants us to come and to ask. Right? One thing we know about young kids is they have no shame asking from their parents. Right? Just take a kid to a, a grocery store and they will ask away about everything. Can I buy this? Can I buy this? Can I buy this? Right? There's no shame. Right? We should not have shame coming to our Father to ask. All types of, 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 of requests. Right? He wants to hear our voice. Go to him in prayer and ask. Finally, the why in pray is to yield, is yielding. Right? When we ask the Lord in prayer, when we ask the Lord to do certain things, right, it's coming with a heart posture of God. Ultimately, I want your will to be done, not mine. I yield to your will. Jesus is the perfect example, right? In the Garden of Gethsemane, as he's going to die on the cross, to take upon himself the punishment for our sins, to take upon himself the righteous uh, a wrath of God upon himself. He prays to the Father, right, that this cup would pass. But then he says, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, Jesus is yielding to the Father's plans. When we come to God with our requests and our desires, right, we're trusting that however God responds, it is for our best interest as his kids. It may not be the way that we want him to respond, but we're trusting that it's for our best. And so that's what yielding is. It's saying, God, I trust you. Your will be done. Not my will. Because I trust you. Now, sometimes uh, in prayer, we might find ourselves just kind of asking the same things over and over again. Maybe saying the same prayers, the same requests, same confession of sin. Uh, and here's the thing, right? Repetition can be a very good thing. Right, if it's not mindless. Repetition can be a very good thing. Right? Like that child who keeps going to their parent multiple times, right? Because they know that their parent or that's their parent. Um, we see the Apostle Paul doing that. Right? In Second Corinthians, he goes to God three times to ask that the thorn of the flesh, that this very painful thing in Paul's life be taken away. So Paul he prayed multiple times that God would take away pain in his life. So re repetition in prayer, right, can be a very good thing. But sometimes in our prayer life, right, maybe we, we want it to be a little more fresh. Right? Maybe it becomes a little dry. And so one way to, to make our time of prayer fresh, I can encourage, is to remember right, uh, that God has spoken to us through, through his word. And in response, we pray back to him. And so in our prayers, right, to keep our times fresh, we can pray the scriptures. 
It's praying the scriptures. Right, so in, in other words, if you read a passage of scripture, whatever you read, there's probably a fresh way to praise God for in that scripture. Right, so you read about, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, you know, feeding the 5,000, right? And you're, you're praising God for being a God of miraculous provision. And then you reveal, right? Re, right? You, you confess sin as you're reading God's word. And you're, you're, you're being convicted. Oh, gosh, Lord, I'm struggling with believing that. Oh, Lord, I didn't do that. Right? That's the time of, okay, then confessing that to the Lord in, pray, in, in prayer. And reading that specific passage of scripture, then asking God according to whatever you read in the scriptures, and then finally, yielding to God in that particular area that you ask that's related to that Bible passage. So it's reading the scripture. So you're, you're kind of coupling it together, right? You're reading, you're intaking God's word, you're hearing his voice, meditating on it, and then you're, in response, you're praying to him. You're praising God. You're, you're revealing sin. You're asking of the Lord, and you're yielding in, in prayer. Trusting the Lord's plan. Again, we, we, we want to encourage these spiritual disciplines privately, but also uh, corporately. And again, that's why we have different groups that, that, that where we meet and we, we do this. We read God's word. We meditate together on the scriptures. And then we spend time praying. So I'd encourage you to, to be involved in, in a group where you can just be supported by other followers of Jesus. So family, as we prepare to fully replant here in New Uwanu, uh, as we look to reach more people with the love of Jesus, especially during these trying times uh, in our neighbor island in Maui and the people living here on Oahu, let's continue right, to grow in our enjoyment and worship of Jesus through our time of prayer, through our time in, word, in the Word, so that we would grow to be more like Jesus, but also that we may lead others to Jesus. Go ahead and pray for us. Father, we thank you for your Word. We thank you for the gift of prayer. And we pray, Lord, you'd use these beautiful gifts to, um, to fuel our love for you. We thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, that you would give your life on the cross, Jesus, rise again from the dead so that we could have this, this uh, union with you, this fellowship with you, that Paul says considers all things a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus. Lord, may that be our aim in life. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to take this time now taking communion as we respond to the Lord in song. If you don't have a communion cup, you can grab one in the back. We have them available. I've got to grab one right now. So you can pull out your communion cup. As we remember Christ's sacrifice for us, he gave his body on the cross so that we could have life in him, so we can be reconciled to the Father. And so we celebrate his death for us through taking of the cracker. So you can go ahead and open up the side that has the cracker. And let's thank the Lord for his sacrifice as we take the cracker together. Let's go ahead and do that. Jesus shed his, his blood on the cross. Right? He, he truly became human. He truly lived, suffered, and died and shed his blood for us so that we could be forgiven. We celebrate that through taking the juice together. Let's go ahead and take the juice, thanking the Lord. Another way uh, you can respond and worship to the Lord is through financial giving. Uh, through advancing the gospel to the local church. You can do that online, uh, or you can give at the box in the back. So let's now respond now to the grace of God in our lives through song to him. You can join me in standing as we sing to our great God and King. I 
Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter And beyond the horizon In mercy for today Faithful you have been Faithful you will be You planned yourself to me And that's why I sing your praise Will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you father the orphan the kindness makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness strength becomes our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bring the beauty from ashes for you will have your back be free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name and it's why I sing your praise when Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised, you will be praised. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you Lord You will be praised You will be praised With angels and saints we sing worthy are you Lord And it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips your praise Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. We'll end declaring God's goodness to us. For He has done great things He has done great things He has done great things Bless His holy name He has done He has done great things He has done great things He has done great things Bless His holy name Bless the Lord Bless the Time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. 
to send you out with this blessing from the words of Paul in Colossians 3. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So as we go about our, our, our week, let's enjoy the Lord through prayer and through his word, uh, worshiping him and, and serving him out of the power of his spirit. So thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Have a great week in the Lord. Aloha.